Hi YouTube, welcome back to Erin with a Hobby. Today's hobby is books. I am going to be going over all of the books that I have read between January and March. So I think this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to split it up into three monthly blocks of all of the books that I read just because I don't read enough in a month to warrant a whole video. So I figured let's break it to three months. So I have read a little bit of manga, a little bit of novels, some series, some standalones. It's been a pretty good first part of the year. I think I'm up to 18 books. So I'm doing pretty well with the series. Um, I also have been to a few musicals. So I also have the programs to talk about for that. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into all of the books that I have read so far in the year of 2023. So first up, we are actually going to talk about the musicals. So I haven't actually talked about it here on this channel, but I am very much a performer. I don't know if you can tell that I have a bit of a stage presence, but I have actually for the past couple of months been involved in a local production of Shrek. So that has actually been going on the past few weekends, partly why I haven't feel, done much filming. Uh, but we're actually, day I'm filming this is day of the last um, show. But I got the uh, program for it partly because I wanted, there I am there, to show me. So if you came and saw it, let me know. Like, or if you've seen Shrek the Musical, it, it's a lot of fun. There's some, been some great audiences, some great reactions. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the last show tonight. Uh, but then... I also went to go see this year Hamilton the musical uh, in one of my other videos if it's already uploaded I will link it here I did the books I added to my TBR because I went to see Hamilton so I fell in love I have fallen down the rabbit hole of Hamilton fan fiction which is bizarre because it's a real thing that actually happened but anyway but I got the program so this one came with two so this is the little book which actually has obviously it's got this bit but it's actually got the more historical stuff the creative team this is more the actual program which has got like the cast actors I did find it very interesting that it had the actual timeline of Alexander Hamilton um, it also has different photos of as they were making it, the merchandise, which I actually didn't get anything other than the program, but I very much liked it. And then the big one, which I'm holding upside down, it has very, not a lot, but it's more going through the, all the songs, has some of the lyrics in it, like different photos from when they did the show. So it's that one and then at the back they've got some of the like sketches of the designs of what they would wear and like the set designs which I was very happy with I I love this uh, I have a growing collection of programs for all the musicals that I have gone to see so first up actually again isn't a book that I've read but it's a new thing that's gonna be on my shelf and that is a art bind up folder display thing uh, done by a touch of magic designs an Australian company which I love they are doing like a whole collection like of 12 of these this is the second one and so the first one was Snow White themed so it was red and this one is Cinderella which says a touch of magic the company and it's got the pumpkin and then it's got be careful what you wish for on the back now I have already completely filled my other ones so I have started I'll give you a sneak peek on some of the arts not all of these are done by a touch of magic design because a lot of these these ones are all done by Roy the art which I love his art these I love they are the cruel prince art designs for the ultimate dust jacket but I didn't get it as a dust jacket because I didn't want to have to choose between having this beautiful cover or the one that I got from Dusty, the Dusty shop. But these are gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. That is a additional one. So I've still got a few sleeves left. Um, but this is that and I'm looking forward to putting it up beside the first one to start making the collection show. Alright, so I've got two giant piles behind me. This is going to be... Let's start with the big pile. Alright, first we're going to talk about... now. 
before I get into it actually, this is in no particular order. This is not in the order I read them, this is just in any. Um, but first we're going to talk about the Fits and the Fools series by Robin Hopp, which includes Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, and Fool's Fate. This is the final trilogy in the Farsia world. So I was, I have read this before, this was a reread for me, but rereading it over last year and this year, it was so that I could also include in there the like Life Ship Trader trilogy and the the um, Dragon Keeper one because I hadn't read them the first time. So I was very happy to read them again with some more information about how certain things came about. Um, I really enjoyed it. So the first one, it, so to give it a bit of a very brief synopsis, this is following Fitz in the final stages, like the final chapters of his life kind of thing, because the first trilogy is following him as a child, as he goes to Buck, uh, Buck Keep Castle, Buck he Keep Castle, um, and he finds out that he's the bastard son of the crown prince, who's to be king, um, and it's showing him going through life and being trained as an assassin. Now this is the third chapter, so after all the events of what happened in the Tawny Man trilogy, which I loved, I think the second one is my favourite, but I really liked this because it introduced a new character that we actually got her perspective, which we haven't got in any of the other series that follows Fitz. All of the other ones have been completely from his point of view, whereas this series actually has another character's point of view in it, which I found really interesting. Now, I did find that not, well, stuff happened in it, but it was a bit slower. So I did, I loved the entire series, but it is a lot because these things are freaking bricks. I will say having reread Assassin's Fate, I do feel like the end was almost rushed in a way, like, because in the rest of the series, like Robin Hobb has a very distinct writing style, I found, where she's very descriptive and things take time to happen. Obviously, when the build-up pays off, it's so good because it's building and building and then it explodes. But I just found that the last bit, the build-up was there, but the twist, I, I got the twist, but I was almost not wanting that twist to happen, if that makes sense. Like... I liked it. It was an awesome ending. I just felt that it was a bit fast paced to fit the rest of the story, if that makes any sense. Still an awesome series. I loved it just as much. I just feel like the ending wasn't my favourite ending of the series. Like, I think, I think the second trilogy is still my favourite. But this is ultimately, I'm so happy to have read them again. Obviously, you have had to have read all of the other series, basically, to this one to make any sense. Because if you don't, it will spoil you and you'll be so confused about who these characters are. Next, we're going to switch over to some manga. So I read uh, volumes 14 and 15 of Blackbird. So I have spoken about this quite a bit because I am currently reading the series. But this series follows the main character who is what is called the Senkai Maiden. So when she turns a set age, I think was 16, when she's considered an adult, she becomes irresistible to these demons that she has always been able to see. And the thing is, if they can devour her flesh, they gain like a thousand years. If they can marry her, impregnate her basically, then they get prosperity for their clan. And it is following her as she meets up again with a demon that she met as a child, who is a Tengu, who says that I am the one that you said you would marry as a child sort of thing and follows her story through that as she gets to learn more about what happens in the demon world and what actually is related to her being the Senkai Maiden. I am loving this. I was very happy to read 14 because 13 left off on a bit of a cliffhanger so I was very happy to see how they, they wrapped up there but 15 sort of gets into the final arc of things of the mystery of the Senkai Maiden and what happens to her sort of thing. So I am very much looking forward to finishing it up because I do have the final three volumes. I haven't hauled them, but I do have them now. So I will be able to finish this series now. So I am very excited to do that. 
Uh, next is a standalone book, which is a bit of a change, and that is Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin. Now, this is the Bookish Box Special Edition, which was my first Bookish Box. I really did like it. Um, now, this book is following um, the main character, I can't think of her name, who is a witch. And she has been keeping this a secret because of what happened in her past. And she doesn't want to tell anyone, but when a curse that she sets um, off goes missing, basically, she has to go hunting it with someone that she absolutely detests to try and stop this curse from exploding and wiping out lots of people. So that's a very basic summary of it. But basically, this is a very, I very much liked this book. It is obviously a standalone, so there is quite a bit of fast paced things that happen. But I did really like it because the way that magic is integrated into the world, magic is there, like everyone knows about it. But there's different types of magic, like there's people magic, nature magic and animal magic. It was very, very cool. And the way that it works was very well described. It's not a five star read for me, just because some of the pacing sort of seemed like, oh, okay, now that's happening. There wasn't a whole lot. I did enjoy it because it is enemies to friends, lovers kind of thing. So I did really enjoy that and the explanations of that was awesome. I did also like how it looked at how the magic is governed by a law sort of thing. So ultimately it was a really good book and I will definitely be reading more by Rachel Griffin. Um, yeah, possibly a series because obviously she had to wrap it up in a single book, but it was very interesting. Uh, next is actually the first book I read in the year, and that is Bardassia by Lynette Noni. This is the final book in the Midorian Chronicles. So I had been reading the Midorian Chronicles throughout the end of last year, and I finished it start of 2023. Um, I, okay, I did like this one. I can see why some people didn't because of the way that they resolved it at the end. So I can't say anything because massive spoilers, but for the I did really like it. It okay, I get why people didn't like it, but ultimately I did enjoy this final book in the series. I loved the characters that were introduced again and we saw them and I did I don't sort of like what they did with one of the person, people's main, like parents because they were a douche. They were an absolute douche for the entire series and then they tried to redeem them. Like that was weird to me. But so it has, it is a little bit since I've read this one so I don't remember a lot of my thoughts. But ultimately I did really like it. It did feel a bit awkward in some instances and I did wish some of the fights that happened between people was a bit more interesting and a bit more fleshed out at times. And thinking back on it, some of the conflicts were kind of forced, but it was explained well in the series. But I was happy to finish it and I'm looking forward to reading more by Lynette Noni. Uh, the next book is Nefertiti by Michael Michelle Moran. Sorry. Now, this is a standalone book following Nefertiti's sister as she becomes an empress. Well, not empress. Pharaoh. The, or the wife of Pharaoh, basically. And it's following her explaining what happens in Nefertiti. Because Nefertiti is obviously quite a popular wife of a pharaoh, so she's pretty well known. Um, but it's actually not from her point of view, which I did think was interesting. Now, this book was all right. It was very repetitive in how things were explained, like why the family of Nefertiti did certain things, like they didn't sort of explain it. They explained it well, but it was very repetitive. The second half I much more enjoyed because it actually followed the sister's life a bit more. And I was it was interesting because I don't know a lot about Egyptian mythology, so it was very interesting to see. And what I didn't know at the time is that this author has written a few more of this style of series following different people in historic history, like different women. So I am looking forward to reading others. It was just 
because ultimately very repetitive and things I just found that it was not the my favorite in terms of writing the characters again it's a historical one so all of the characters are pretty well known it's just not my favorite not the worst not my favorite all right nearly at the end um next book is the good thief by hannah tinty now i did I don't want to say I completely didn't like it. I'm sort of on the fence. It's sort of around a three stars if I had to rate it. So this is following a young orphan boy who only has one hand when he he does not think he's going to get adopted at all until one day this man turns up saying that he's his brother and takes him on this life. Who? But he then finds out that he's a gold a grave digger. So he goes with him on this job to try and make money. Now this concept sounded really interesting and it does have a bit of a mystery because the main dude child is trying to figure out who his family is so it was really interesting like going into it however the writing style in this it did not it felt like it was going nowhere like it really especially the first two parts it was very unclear like I would have loved to be explored more. This kid is just a natural pickpocket. He's really good at it because no one expects anything of him. So it was really interesting at that point of it, but it wasn't really explored. And like more what happened at the orphanage or possibly, I, I don't know, but it just wasn't my favorite in the writing style. Also the mystery of who his family is. I felt that that was a horrible reveal. Like that was absolutely pathetic. Not, not pathetic, like I get what they were trying to do, I just don't think it was executed the best and it wasn't like he had different, a lot of different options that popped up, it just wasn't my favourite in how it ended up working. It was, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna, I might read some few other things by this author, I, I don't know, it wasn't my, it was a no, just an okay read. Alright, and the last is a stack of manga. I have read volumes one through nine of Tokyo Ghoul. So I am rereading this series because I absolutely love it and I managed to get my hands on the entire series um, second hand which was very well done. Um, but if you don't know what Tokyo Ghoul is about it is following it is set in this world of the world of Tokyo but in this world there are such things as ghouls and ghouls are the natural predators of humans because the only thing that they can eat is human flesh. Now the problem is they are a lot stronger than humans are so obviously it's a lot harder to kill them but it is following the main character Kaneki, who's that dude on the back, who when he goes on a date with Rize it does not go well because she tries to eat him. What then happens is he ends up in a hospital from an accident and gets her organs implanted into him and becomes a half ghoul and has to live as a ghoul and learn the ghoul world so it was very interesting like I love this series some of these volumes are a bit more info dumpy than I remember them being but I love this series now it is not for the faint of heart it is not for a younger audience because obviously cannibalism there is torture there is some very gruesome fight scenes obviously there's murder all sorts of things so i am loving this series i'm loving rereading it i <clears throat> love reading it again i'm loving where it's up to obviously i'm getting the manga and the anime are very different the first series of the anime is very similar but the second is not i love this and I'm looking forward to finishing it. I think I only have four more volumes left until I've read the entire series, but I'm looking forward to getting to the end of it. All right, so those are all of the books that I have read in the first three months of the year. Let me know what you've been reading this year. Like I've had, that's a pretty good stack for me. And I also find that most of them have been pretty good. My voice is starting to go. So that's why I've started to rush through a little bit. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and also subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any other videos. But I hope everyone has a lovely day and continues to live well. Bye guys.